If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Matt Money Shot. Snip it up College Football 25 Cheese. In today's video, we have a massive update, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it because it's so big. I don't want this video to be a half an hour long. But as always, if you guys want to keep you up to date with things like this, with updates in future videos, please make sure to be subscribed to the like button. Let me know in the comment section. And before I get into the video, I also want to say that it's important to note that when EA says that they pat something, it isn't always true. So if you're still having issues with any of these things, uh, please let us all know in the comment section. If you're having any issues that haven't been addressed yet, please let us know in the comment section because i hope that ea watches videos like this for feedback uh although you can always go on their, like their twitter and stuff like that or their x account and stuff like that and uh let them know directly uh because that's how i find out all this stuff is you guys tell me in the comment section i don't actually know what the major issues are in a lot of the game modes that i don't play now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start off from the top here because there really is a lot number one they added a lot of new shotgun formations eight new shotgun formations to a total of 35 teams i'm not going to go over them individually but i will leave it up on screen so you guys can check that out out, but if you're you know check out your favorite team playbook because there may be some changes especially if you use nc state and liberty because they're mo mentioned multiple times uh as, as as playbooks that got new formation so that's really cool um the biggest issue in the game in gameplay is probably uh you know throughout the entire year has been pursuit angles as there really just hasn't been a lot of um you know a lot of times it just feels like guys can get to the edge and just run around everybody it's really terrible well it says that they uh, introduced new tuning and logic enhancements to pursuit angles so hopefully that fixed that it says introduced introduced new behavior that further differentiates players with high pursuit ratings versus lower pursuit ratings now that was something they said at the beginning of the year that like one star versus five star players would be a big difference and then when the game came out they all kind of reacted the same so hopefully this changed that hopefully players with higher pursuit ratings will do a better job of getting the ball carriers and not laying them outside as much uh, there was a lot to do with run defense as well uh, things like uh, cornerbacks uh, basically, um, you know, on the edge, you could run outside against any, any with any defense. It doesn't really matter. You could run outside pretty easily. Well, it says that they uh, adjusted the DB's ability to more effectively shed blocks on the perimeter. So, basically, sounds like they buffed up cornerbacks shedding blocks outside. So maybe that'll reduce the ability to get outside too easily, which is something that's definitely been an issue um, for sure. I mean, that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. Another thing that happens a lot was uh you know broken tackles especially from behind and it says they reduce the frequency of broken tackles from trailing defenders which is kind of like if you tackle try to tackle guy from behind it was automatic the guy was just breaking the tackle hopefully that's not the case anymore hopefully from now on you can actually uh, get a guy from behind uh and, and reduce some of the bigger plays but through those couple fixes alone it sounds like defense is back now they also address the wildcat a lot it says that they made an adjustment to the wildcat unbalanced motion zone play which was the glitchy one that a lot of people were exploiting in the game um, it also says that uh, they basically changed how defense run fit defenders uh, were not responding as effectively to Wildcat plays. Uh, so it sounds like the Wildcat is officially nerfed. Uh, it'll probably still be pretty good. But with those two changes alone, I would imagine that they, they nerfed that play because that was definitely an issue. Something else that they nerfed was plays that had multiple ladders on a single play, uh, which you know sounds like double pass plays. Or uh, a lot of times people do it on their own, but there were a lot of plays like uh, like you know passes you would throw to the halfback and then the halfback would throw a pass. It sounds like they probably tried to nerf those because when when you ran those, a lot of times the receivers would just get wide open, like the defense would just totally uh, you know glitch out and forget to cover the receivers. So it sounds like they probably addressed that, but it doesn't necessarily say there was a lot of changes to offense as well. It says they updated pass protection mechanic to include the running back. In protection if they're already in a uh, block or a block and release assignment which is something that um, i've talked about quite a bit you have to slide protection to get that apparently not to do that anymore um, there was a lot of stuff that has to do with um, quarterbacks running around apparently quarterbacks scrambling around was was an issue because um, they basically uh you know if you're running around behind the line of scrimmage now you're going to lose stamina at a faster rate so a lot of people apparently were doing that they had to nerf the quarterback's ability to keep their stamina up for that to happen it says they also uh, increased the speed penalty of, for running out of stamina during a play. Apparently there was another exploit when it came to QB contains uh, because if you had a guy in a certain QB contain, it says that, that a lot of times they would get it unblocked. It says they'll make further adjustments to this in the future as well in a future update because apparently QB contains are pretty broken, which I wasn't, wasn't really aware of. Now, they also increased the reward players receive for shading inside or outside correctly in man coverage versus passing routes. 
but it doesn't say if they were if they increase the penalty. So obviously, if you're in man coverage, you want to try. To, if it doesn't increase the penalty, you want to try to shade inside or outside on just about every single play. And now your man coverage will be that much better if you guess right, uh, which is obviously pretty good. Apparently, there was an issue too on uh, speed option plays where the running back wouldn't follow uh, long enough. A lot of times, you guys he would disappear and take away that option to throw to the to pitch to the running back. So that's something that uh, they fixed. Uh, another thing when it comes to AI, uh, when it comes to the offensive line with RPO plays, a lot of times they'll basically, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll run downfield before you have a chance to make a decision on a play and you'll get a penalty. That's something that's been in the game for a long time. It says they adjusted the AI, the offensive line behavior, resulting in less illegal man downfield penalties. But I don't know about that because, like I said, they've never fixed that in Madden. So I have a hard time believing that they actually – uh, fix that here. So that's uh, that's pretty much it for gameplay. There are some other things when it comes to like issues with adding formations to custom playbooks, uh, which they appear to fix. So if you're having issues with certain with your custom playbook, you can probably fix that now. On defense, more specifically, it was the four two five and the three three five formations you couldn't add, and on offense, it was single back formations having uh, the, you know the wrong name in uh, in creating custom playbooks. So those things appear to be fixed. Uh, and that's pretty much it for gameplay. It's still a pretty beefy amount of things in gameplay that got fixed. Uh, but this next one's kind of gameplay too, but it's more about the abilities. There were certain uh, broken abilities like the gold and platinum tiers for juke and spin abilities. They rebalanced those, which basically means uh, nerf them. And it says that they also slightly rebalance the effectiveness of gold and platinum tiers when it comes to quick jump ability, which are probably the two most broken abilities in the game. Sounds like they nerfed those. If you're one of these guys that uses Texas every time because of all the uh, the quick jump abilities on the defensive front seven, they also adjusted that. So they probably took away a few, probably nerfed a few uh, to the point where they're not going to be as overpowered when it comes to pass rush anymore because that was obviously really uh, something a lot of people would use uh, Texas for was because of all the quick jump abilities. So the uh, the spin ability in this and the juke and spin ability has been nerfed and so have the quick jump ability. Uh, it says they also rebalanced the platinum tier of the extender ability for uh, quarterbacks, which includes not firing on QB design run plays. I don't really understand. I guess I guess from time to time it wasn't working. But ultimately, um, yeah, it, that was probably what they were talking about earlier when they were saying that they were uh, you know, basically adding more stamina penalty for running around in the pocket. It probably has to do with that as well. That's an exploit that I really wasn't too aware of. And then last but not least, they also changed the colors of the platinum versus silver tier so that it's easier to differentiate between the two. Now, Dynasty has a ton of fixes as well. This first one here, this is what I'm talking about. This first one here is something that they said they patched before, where it says they fixed an issue where players were unable to have more than 20 created coaches at one time in an online Dynasty League. That's something that they already mentioned in a previous patch. So obviously they didn't fix it last time. What makes me think that they fix it this time? But that's something that we should keep an up, uh, keep an eye on. Uh, one of the bigger issues uh, when it came to um, you know the top 25 polls and stuff like that, uh, they tried to address that. They made a lot of changes to certain things like the score summaries, um, you know the 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 news stories, uh, introduced a new playoff bracket screen, uh, updated the Texas Oklahoma State rivalry data. Um, apparently, there's a weird one here. It says discovered that the, F the FCS uh, certain divisions were were secretly using professional players and passing them off as collegiate players. How did this happen in a game? In a, in a game like this is this is just weird. Uh, it says they gave these teams sanctions and I'm sure they're now using properly rated players. I don't understand that at all. I don't know if they're making a little joke there. That one's kind of weird. But it says for this game to go into effect, you will need to recreate or to create a new dynasty. So keep that in mind. Uh, it says fixed an issue where wear and tear did not recover for FCS teams, resulting in a higher number of FCS teams injuries during gameplay. That I noticed because I was I'm playing uh, a team and it was I swear it was like an injury every other play although my injuries never really got that way so that was definitely something that was noticeable it was like uh, the body bag game when you're playing SES schools uh, it says reduced dynamic attendance penalties for playing teams for playing S FCS teams and it also says increased dynamic attendance in rivalry games retune toughest places to play formula to reduce the impact that large stadiums have on toughest places to play and all these things are basically about um, you know, the, the, the meter, the, uh, the crowd noise meter. And then it says, um, it increased the value of filling the stadium and winning games at home historically. So they, they basically were talking about a lot of, there's been a lot of upsets 
it says increased impact of historical win rate, increased impact of an attendance rate. When you're talking about historical win rate and, uh, you know, historically all these things, they're basically saying that uh, they're trying to figure out why uh, smaller schools are knocking off bigger schools. And they think that if they changed, uh, if they go back off of like historic record, that maybe these teams will not have as many upsets. So they're basically trying to make it so that the right teams win more often because that's also been a big issue in Dynasty. And they talk about that more in the polls section where they basically increase the loss penalty for schools with one or more with more than one loss. So basically you won't see teams with like three losses playing for the national championship anymore. Uh, it says increased the weighing of cons- or conference prestige in the poll calculations as well, uh, which is obviously important. I know I just played a dynasty and I was like ranked 15th with like, um, I think it's Texas State I use. And it was like, you know, I don't play anybody all year. So it's still kind of weird. Even with, even I think I had one loss. And I didn't even, I just simmed it because I was just kind of messing around with the recruiting. And I still only had one loss and still was in the top 15, which is really weird. Uh, but yeah, so, so basically, you know, these are things that are hopefully aimed at fixing the the polls being so off it also says reduce the variance in college football poll logic meaning that the media and the coaches should look the same Uh, but all these things are things they're going to continue to look at they also fixed the uh, logic tuning for uh, Heisman uh, because apparently offensive linemen were in the preseason Heisman rankings, and they took that. They fixed that. They also updated the Heisman watch logic to reduce the value of receiving touchdowns because apparently receivers were probably winning the Heisman way too much. They put a lot of time into recruiting as well. It says they fixed an issue where teams were pursuing too many quarterbacks in the high school recruiting. Uh, obviously, you know that that doesn't make a lot of sense if you have like seven quarterbacks on a team. It says reduce the number of unrecruited four and five star recruits early in the season. Yeah, there's a throughout the entire year. It feels like there's a lot of unrecruited players with high star ratings. It's really weird. It's like who would want four and five star guys and be knocking their door down? Uh, but yeah, that's something that you know you can you can get find four and five star unrecruited players like towards the end of the season. It's crazy. It says increase the number of players that the AI will pursue at one time. Uh, Basically, they're trying to make recruiting more difficult at this point because it really was kind of easy. So now there's going to be less recruits uh, throughout the year. You're going to have to get in on those recruits early or you're going to miss out on is what it sounds like. Uh, But this is something, once again, that they're going to be watching. Now, scheduling visits was also an issue. Apparently, there were times where you couldn't schedule a visit even though you should be allowed to. So they attempted to fix that. It also says that sometimes recruits that were removed from your board would still come in on a visit, which is kind of weird. They, f- they apparently tried to fix that. They t- really tried to tune the uh, visit influence effects. Uh, removed initial influence when scheduling a visit. Increased disparity between winning and losing a game during a visit. And also tune the logic for game stakes to better account for ranked teams. Oh, and there's another one here. It says increase the penalty for choosing a visit activity that the team does not have a high grade in or the player is not interested in. So basically, um, the the sway that you get from uh, visits uh, was, you know, they tried to fix the fact that you couldn't make the visit at all, but they also uh, tune the effectiveness of it. So it's not just as easy as, all right, we scheduled a visit, now he's going to sign with us. So that's something that, um, you know, they be- they definitely tried to fix and tune recruiting for sure to make it more difficult from the sounds of it because it sounded way too easy. Now, they also, uh, to reflect the logic when it comes to wins and losses and the AP poll and stuff like that, they also did that in the Super Sim. Uh, so basically, if you're Super Simming a lot, it says that they're going to, they made various tunes and fixes to increase the gap between good and bad teams slash players. So if you're, if you're Simming, whether you're Simming through the season uh, just by skipping the week or Simming in the game and playing offense or defense or whatever you like to do, uh, it's going to have more realistic logic. Uh, when it comes to that. And it's also going to increase the amount of simulated RPO plays, which, you know, I don't really think anybody cares about that. But that's something that's definitely uh, going to be, you know, hopefully they'll they address that more and it's going to work better. There was an issue with custom schedules uh, when it comes to custom conferences. Well, they appear to try to fix that. It said fix an issue in conference rules where divisions were changed to off even if those divisions were previously turned on. Uh, that was something that people were having issues with. Um, it says fix an issue where the independence tab disabled when removing all teams from independence. So that means if you took all the teams out of, out of the independent division, I guess they, the, the, the tab, the option would just disappear. Next up, we're going to go over road to glory. It says added an additional scenario 
and NIL content, which is something that uh, I'm not even sure was in the game. So that might be brand new. I haven't played Road to Glory. You'll have to forgive me on that. It says, fix rare issue where you get a scenario reward screen that did not align with your received bonuses. Uh, and lots of issues like that. Lots of small stuff. It says, fix an issue where people are getting skill points maxed out after completing a practice. They also fixed an issue where it was impossible to lose coach trust once you've reached max coach trust. So there's never a chance. You can always lose coach trust. So that's something that they fixed. It says, they fixed an issue where you could not upgrade your player during bye weeks uh fix an issue where uh, with mental goals not tracking correctly or reaching platinum correctly uh, a lot of things that when it comes to the the actual rewards to playing the game that they they really seem to fix uh they also made a lot of changes in the uh, ultimate team uh one of them is generating best lineup no longer changes your equipped visuals or playbook it says fix a crash that occurred during kicking off at halftime when playing champs I'm imagining that's draft champs, but it doesn't really say that. If you like to play 3v3 squads, apparently there was some bug that was preventing two users from being able to connect to the game. They fixed that. Apparently there was issues with conference filters and the auction house not working correctly, so they uh, fixed that too. After that, we're going to get the presentation. Uh, it says they add a lot of new uniform pieces for Baylor, Oregon, Iowa State, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Bowling Green, Northwestern. You can see all the teams up here. I'm not going to read them all, uh, but that's something that they did add a lot of new uniforms. I think Vanderbilt was one of them because I saw some pictures, uh, so I don't know if that was something because I don't see them listed here, so I don't know if that was something they add after the fact. Uh, it said adjusted uniform pieces for uh, TCU, Arkansas, Missouri, and Baylor to reflect the 2024 season. Uh, and then there's uh, various improvements made to teams' uniform pieces for authenticity. Also, says updates have been made to the following stadiums. Holiday Bowl, Texas State, Kansas State, Kennesaw State, Oklahoma State, Wake Forest, UL, UL Monroe, and Nebraska. It says that they also restored the opening chance for Penn State, FSU, and Tennessee on Xbox Series S, which is the second time that they said that once again. I know because I had somebody comment on the last video saying that they did not fix that. Uh, it says, fix an issue where the USC mascot would disappear during the opening ceremony. Fix an issue where the incorrect mascot would appear during different situations. So mascot patches as well. Uh, and the last but not least, we also have Road to CFP, which has the smallest portion of the update. This is the actual game mode that I play. It says tier rebalancing and reconstruction, changing the format from three tiers to five tiers, which is huge because I, I honestly felt there was way too many teams in tier two and way too big of a disparity between the tier some of the tier two teams so i'm imagining they spread that out uh which is totally cool uh so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this as always please make sure to be subscribed to like button in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below